What's up everybody, another beautiful day in the Dragon Isles and we're back with some more Mythic Raid Guides. Today we're taking a look at Mythic Forgotten Experiments. Now I'll be going over most of the Mythic mechanics, how to deal with them and our overall tactic for this fight. And if you have any questions or suggestions for the fight, hit me up and let me know in the comments if you've downed a boss. Prog hype! So setup wise, good old 2 tanks, 4 healers and 14 DPS. A big portion of this fight is 2 target cleave, with the occasional 2 to 5 extra adds, spawning from the unstable essence mechanic. So builds slash specs that favor that, and you also if possible want to bring 2 priests. At least 1 I'd say is mandatory and 2 makes it a lot easier, at least with the approach we went for. And Uwookers can also remove bleeds, which is huge for this fight. Not something you have to have, but great if you do! So the big new mechanic here is Zealous Creations. When Neldris reaches 50% HP, Chadrian spawns, and when it reaches is 50%, Ryanthus spawns. So you'll be forced to deal with a lot of their mechanics overlapping. Now on top of this, Neldris and Ryanthus has gotten an additional mechanic on Mythic as well. So the bleed from Neldris rending charge now lasts forever, forcing you to actually deal with it properly as you really don't want additional players getting hit by it. The way we did was simply 3 marks, targeted players run over and each stand on one of their marks. Ish. Big brain. We also used Uwookers to clear the first bleeds and then players immune, dwarf racial, blessing of protection following bleeds if they had them, otherwise just heal forehead. And Ryanthus, temporal anomaly, the swirly orb players that bounce it away from boss takes 100% increased damage from bouncing the tempura anomaly and this stacks and lasts for 20 seconds. So you can't go on a solo mission and knock this thing away all by your lonesome, cause well, you die. So it's pretty much up to whoever doesn't have too many stacks of this and isn't currently doing some other mechanic to deal with the bouncing orb. That and tanks can kite him, or the bosses. Now on top of this, as always, everything's been beefed up a lot and is way more punishing, but the big thing really is that you have to deal with two of them at the same time a lot. It's almost twice as hard. So before breaking down the fight, I want to talk a bit about the unstable essences. Now dispelling him, as well as the adds that spawns, are a huge part of this fight on Mythic. Due to the fact that Chadrian spawns when Neldra is at 50% and you need to finish Neldris before you get too many bleeds out. Chatterin will naturally be alive longer and dish out more unstable essences. And on Mythic, both the dot that stacks up before you dispel it and the adds that spawn really hurts. Really hurts. So what we did was we tried to dispel him very quickly or aggressively if you will. So whenever boss cast unstable essence, all players with the debuff currently stacked on a mark and we mass dispelled and then most DPS swapped over. Now these adds needs to die fast. Their cast hits real hard on the entire raid and will easily lead to a few players dying if they go off. Now the secret Omega Papega brain strat, we put a devastation Uvuker to always save their fire breath for when the ad spawn, which was about every other ad spawn. So they would time their fire breath so it hits with max and power directly when the ad spawns to utilize their reverse execute mastery, which does an insane amount of difference on the ad as they burst tremendously when they're at full health. Much burst! Very good. Now to make the unstable essence dispel a tad more big brain, there's a few rules, if you will, for when you do and don't want to dispel. So when both Neldris and Chadrin is up, you don't want to dispel right before a rending charge as players with unstable might get targeted and need to run away. Plus you lose uptime on the adds overall. You also don't want to dispel them a few seconds before violent eruption. If any adds are up during it, the raid takes a metric ton of damage, then you die. So make sure if you dispel before violent eruption that there's enough time for the adds to spawn and for you to actually nuke him down. And lastly, when Ryanthus is up, avoid dispelling right before a deep breath, as there's a big chance you'll lose a lot of uptime or DPS on the adds, as you won't be able to reach him if you're unlucky. So yeah, dispel away. Now if you only have one mass dispel, later on in the fight you'll be forced to wait a lot longer before mass dispelling, so players targeted by unstable essence will get a lot higher stack and take a lot more damage, so it gets a lot more healing intense. However, you do gain boss damage since you don't need to swap to adds as much. In earlier stages with one mass dispel, you can single dispel the other, but when you get to 4 or 5 plus debuffs, single dispelling falls off the table fairly fast. Now with that said, let's break down the fight and its timings a bit. Cue the picture! 
Now on pull, you want to tank Neldris roughly in the middle of the room, near the rending charge marks. Do not use combat pot or any DPS cooldowns that aren't up again after a minute or a minute and a half. This is so you have everything available for when Chatterin joins the fight. Ideally, you want to push Neldris without cooldowns before the fourth rending charge. Now if you push right before the fourth charge, you can use one and a half minute cooldowns on pull. If you push before the third, you can only use one minute cooldowns on pull, so it depends on your overall rate DPS. And players targeted by rending charge spread on the three marks. If you have evoker bleed dispels, use them on the first bleeds and bops, then immunes if you have them if they get targeted. Now keep in mind that his bellowing roar hurts a ton if you stand right next to the boss, so if you don't have raid cooldowns running or something, then melee needs to step out a little bit right before it goes boom boom. And when Thadrin joins the fight, bloodlust, combat pot, all cooldowns and slap away. Prior is to get Neldris down fast to avoid more bleeds, but it is fine to nuke Thadrin while Neldris is away charging. Now you can either dispel the first set of unstable essences pretty much instantly on the mark, otherwise wait for the next set and dispel that, since boss usually did violent eruption shortly after first set into a rending charge from Neldris and then second set spawns just a few sec later. So we opted in to just wait for the second, but do spam heal the debuffed players. Now you want to finish Neldris before his fifth rending charge if possible, or sooner, and then push chatter into 50% as soon as possible possible after that. When Ryanthus joins the fight, goal is to Omega Papega blast down Chatterin to avoid getting more unstable essences, and if possible you want to kill him before the fifth set of unstable essences go out. For sure, before the sixth. Now as you start getting three plus adds spawning, it becomes increasingly important that a lot of your DPS swaps over so you're able to kill him fast. So when Ryanthus spawned, we tanked boss just outside of the dispel area, whenever possible, so melee doesn't lose too much uptime and can swap faster. Now keep in mind that you want to avoid dispelling essence right before a deep breath makes it a lot harder to deal with the adds. On the topic of deep breath, <sighs> You can bait this. It targets the largest clump of players in one of its paths, so if most of the raid is in the middle, it will go in the middle. And if you dodge out to the left and back to the middle, it will go in the middle again. And then following this, players targeted by Disintegrate keep in mind that your circle around you deals damage to everyone around you or anyone it hits. So do play a bit of Dance Dance Revolution and dodge around. If you're killing adds for example, perhaps don't plant yourself dead center on the adds and AoE all the other players around you. You will also need to keep close attention to the Tempura Anomalies, they move pretty damn fast on Mythic and you do not knock him back a great distance, so be overly aggressive with knocking him away when Chatterin is alive. Once he's dead, tanks can kite Ryanthus whenever it's needed. However, it's still better if you can keep him close to the dispel area. So do knockity knock knock knock. But in the worst case, always drag bosses away. It's far better to lose uptime than giving the boss a 20% max health absorb. Trust me. And once Chatterin is dead, the fight becomes a lot more manageable. You still gotta deal with whatever amount of unstable essences you have and dispel them ever so often so they don't die. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the forgotten experiments huh? on Mythic. Now if you have any questions, hit me up here, become a patron or Twitch sub and get access to the Stanky Gaming Discord, which is the fastest way to get a hold of me and it's filled with a lot of useful info and helpful people if you ever need any help PvE wise. And it also helps me out a ton. And don't forget the usual stuff, like, comment, subscribe and most importantly ring that notification bell. I'm also streaming all my progression rating on Twitch, Wednesdays, Thursdays and Sundays, Stanky Gaming. And um, Thank you all for watching, I will see you next time.